We begin today's show looking at allegations that universities have failed to address threats of violence against Jewish students following a contentious congressional hearing on anti-Semitism and a broader effort to restrict pro-Palestinian speech on campus. On Saturday, the University of Pennsylvania president, Elizabeth McGill, resigned her position over fallout from last Tuesday's House Education Committee hearing. UPenn board chair Scott Bach, who announced her resignation, he also resigned soon after. McGill was questioned, along with Harvard President Claudine Gay and MIT President Sally Kornbluth, by the right-wing Republican New York Congress member and Trump ally Elise Stefanik. This is Stefanik questioning Harvard President Gay first, then UPenn President McGill. It's a yes or no extends. question. Let me ask you this. You are president of Harvard, so I assume you're familiar with the term intifada, correct? I've heard that term, yes. And you understand that the use of the term intifada in the context of the Israeli-Arab conflict is indeed a call for violent armed resistance against the state of Israel, including violence against civilians and the genocide of Jews. Are you aware of that? That type of hateful speech is personally abhorrent to me. Well, let me ask you this. Will admissions offers be rescinded or any disciplinary action be taken against students or applicants who say, from the river to the sea or intifada, advocating for the murder of Jews? As I've said, that type of hateful, reckless, offensive speech is personally abhorrent to me. Ms. McGill, at Penn, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's rules or code of conduct? Yes or no? If the speech turns into conduct, it can be harassment, yes. I am asking, specifically calling for the genocide of Jews, does that constitute bullying or harassment? If it is directed and severe or pervasive, it is harassment. So the answer is yes. It is a context-dependent decision, Congresswoman. That's University of Pennsylvania President Elizabeth McGill. She announced her resignation Saturday and will remain a tenured law professor at UPenn. Major donors to the University of Pennsylvania had demanded McGill's resignation since September after she refused to cancel the Palestine Rights Literature Festival on campus. New York Republican Congress member Elise Stefanik herself faced scrutiny for campaign ads she ran last year that echoed Donald Trump and appeared to promote the white supremacist great replacement theory that Jews want to replace and disempower white Americans. She made similar comments after the mass shooting in Buffalo, New York, that was inspired by the great replacement theory. After news of McGill's resignation, Stefanik called for the ouster of the Harvard and MIT president writing on social media, one down, two to go. She was echoed by Trump. Thank you, Elise. What a job she's done. You know, I watched the way she's very smart. I watched the way she was asking the questions, and they were asked in a very complex way. And these women, who I guess are smart, but boy, that was, they were really dumb answers, weren't they? But they were asked in a very complex way, and these people had no idea what the hell they were doing. I said, you know, I think she's got to lose her job. I guess they're all going to be losing their job within the next day or two, but one down, two to go. This comes as Harvard President Claudine Gay has growing support. Some 600 professors signed a petition against calls for her to step down this weekend. The school's board of directors met Sunday. Congressmember Stefanik is a Harvard alumna and was removed from a Harvard advisory board in 2021 over her comments about voter fraud in the 2020 election that had, quote, no basis in evidence.